Gaza is facing ever greater dangers of death, destruction, and starvation. With over 80% of Gaza's 2.5 million population displaced, deaths exceeding 19,000, and starvation becoming a threat to the war-torn enclave, calls for a ceasefire are intensifying. We have to work on the ceasefire. There is no doubt. Uh, we, on, on Friday, it was, uh, it was a big uh, uh, disappointment. It's uh, outrageous that we still have to wait, especially for the people under the bombardment. But meanwhile, we need uh, to significantly increase uh, commodities going into Gaza. We need to open Karim Shalom. We need commercial uh, flow. Three days after a U.S. veto killed hopes of getting to that ceasefire, 16 ambassadors to the U.N., from current and incoming members of the Security Council, visited the Rafah crossing in Egypt, the only crossing for aid into Gaza, to get a first-hand understanding of the immense need for aid and medical treatment. The National was among a small group of journalists invited to accompany the delegation. The needs are absolutely immense, and what comes in still remains a crumble compared to the need of the people. His words ring true. Hundreds of trucks line the streets leading to the Rafah border. When we reach the main warehouse, filled with donations from countries around the world, it is stocked high with food, basic essentials like diapers, and medical equipment. Every single item entering Gaza needs to be approved by the Israeli authorities. Approvals are slow and sometimes items are rejected by Israel, claiming they could be used by Hamas, responsible for the deadly 7th of October attack. The warehouse is a short drive to the Rafah border. All the way here, we see trucks waiting to just cross these borders to get to the Palestinians who are in dire need of aid. However, again, complications, logistics, and a continuing war. Everyone we've spoken to here says what is most needed is a ceasefire. If the war doesn't end, we'll never be able to get past the level of destruction, the level of angst and pain. UAE Permanent Representative Lana Nuseiba got UN Security Council envoys to come here to see for themselves what a lack of a ceasefire looks like, but also in visiting patients, meeting with Palestinians that have been injured, but also the holding up of aid and the catastrophe that continues in Gaza. The main briefings we've been having today is the impact of this conflict on civilians in Gaza, both in the medical sense um, but also in terms of the dire humanitarian situation. We're talking about the number of casualties now being reported as over 17,000, 60% of them women and children. The medical health system is clearly collapsing and the humanitarian aid process is clearly not working. It's not just food and aid trying to get into Gaza that face impediments. There's a pressing need to get wounded civilians out for urgent medical care. Al Arish General is an Egyptian hospital close to the Gaza border being the main point for evacuated Palestinians. But only a bare minimum of the wounded make it to its wards, as Israel too has the authority to block their departure. Some of the wounded evacuated to the UAE for treatment get initial assessment at this hospital. It is very clear that we need to have the unhindered flow and sustained flow of humanitarian aid in, but also of those needing medical assistance to come out also. And thanks to the generous um, assistance being given by countries like the UAE that have field hospitals, these, the, 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 the people in Gaza that have medical requirements should be able to access what is being offered by these generous countries. The difficulties of movement were made even more apparent when we heard testimonies of doctors explaining what it's like on the other side of the border at the UAE-supported field hospital UAE inside support. Gaza, which is just a short yet impossible drive away. Our trip lasted less than 24 hours, and as we got back on the plane, ambulances arrived carrying two children, each with a guardian, who will get treatment in Abu Dhabi. While efforts continue in the UN and elsewhere to get permission for more aid to get into Gaza and to ensure the protection of civilians in this ruinous war, these are still incredibly inadequate to ease the pain of the Palestinians. A ceasefire becomes ever more necessary. <laughs>